Welcome back. Moving forward, in this lesson, I'm going to tell you the concept and also demonstrate so you can actually see what service registries are and why do we use them? Why is it important within the Hibernate environment? So before I dive deep into the actual types of service registries, there are, there are kind of three types. Bootstrap service registry, service registry implementer, or also known as the standard service registry, and our session factory service registry. So let's take a look at what this really is. What is a service and what is a registry? So services and registries are basically new as a formalized concept starting in the 4.0 version. So currently Hibernate is in 5.1, right? That's what we're using. So the functionality provided by different services have actually been around within the Hibernate environment much, much longer. But what is new is managing them, their life cycles, their scope, their dependencies through a lightweight dedicated container we call a service registry. So just a simple definition of what a service registry is all about. It's just a container that manages the scope and the life cycles. Okay. Breaking the service and registry down, first let's take a look at what a service is. So services simply provide different types of functionality in a pluggable manner, right? So if you need to achieve a certain target, you would pick a service, implement it. So for example, if you need to connect your web data to your database at the back end, right? You need some connectivity, right? Such as the JDBC driver or OLADB or any other types of integration, right? So a service simply provides a functionality in a pluggable manner. More specifically, they are interfaces defining certain functionality and then implementations of those service contract interfaces. The interface is basically known as the service role and the implementation class is called the service implementation. So we have two things, service role and service implementation. The pluggability now comes from that the service implementation adheres to contract defined by the interface of the service role and that consumers of the service program to the service role, not the implementation. I know it's a little tricky, right? But just think of a service as a pluggable piece of code that you design, that you can create, you can use, that integrates and uses the service role and service implementation. So once again, the pluggability essentially is coming from what service implementation basically complies to the contract being defined by the service role. So just to give you an idea of what a service is. Here's an example to further clarify so you understand what the service is. Before I demonstrate in Eclipse and actually show you, Hibernate needs to be able to access JDBC connections to the database, right? That's the core function of Hibernate is to take the objects, Java objects, and put them into the database. The way it obtains and releases these connections is through a connection provider service. Remember service? Good. The service is defined by the interface, which is the service role. So for example, org.hibernate.engine.jdbc.connections.spi.connectionprovider declares methods for obtaining and releasing the connections. There are multiple implementations of the service contract varying in how they actually manage these connections, right? So there are variations within the core service role. So for example, you could have an org.hibernate.engine.jdbc.connections.internal.data-source-connections provider IMPL for using it with Java X source, or you can have a different kind of connection service, such as 
connecting or with using it with the connection pool. So now hope it's clear what a service is and what Hibernate needs, right? It needs to be able to connect to the JDBC connections. So let's take a look at where this is in Eclipse. So now you can actually see and not just understand the concept, but also you can apply it, right? So visually see where um, this org.hibernate.engine is, where is this connection provider service? So I'm going to switch to the Eclipse environment. All right, great. So once I'm in my Eclipse IDE, notice within the Package Explorer, I think I've set this up, uh, the Hibernate environment, so you can actually see. In one of the previous lessons, we configured the Hibernate environment, right? So we added various JAR files, which are Java archive files. So for example, let me go ahead and show you so you can actually see where these services are. So I'm going to expand one of the Hibernate projects that I did earlier. And one of the JAR files is called the core Hibernate, right? So let me, in fact, expand the source folder here. All right. So here is the Hibernate core 5.2.2 one jar file right which is a required file and we did this earlier in the previous lessons right we installed we added all the jar files because without these jar files you're not going to have the hibernate perspective and the hibernate environment right all right so if i expand the core file and within this i'm going to find the hibernate dot engine right so i'm looking for hibernate.db or engine.jdbc there we go okay so this essentially is what driving the connection to the database so if i expand this for example you'll notice it's a bunch of classes so that's all there is to it it's just a bunch of classes that define the actual service and roles so notice there are several of these right and all of these are within just this single hibernate core jar file similarly you have jar files for other implementations such as jboss transaction if you're uh, doing java x interceptor or osgi for example um, using ant and so on and you can add these jar files based on your own requirements so if a requirement comes up where you need to use a specific jar file you could do so for example this particular jar file mysql connector java 5.1.42 was something that we also added for the connectivity so i hope it makes sense for now what the concept of service and these jar files are so let's switch back to our slides all right great so now we understand that hibernate needs to be able to access the jdbc connections to the database and the way it obtains and releases these connections is through the connection provider service and as a homework and task go through once you install hibernate you have all these jar files go through them take a look understand them do some more research about these find out what they are because as you develop more and more applications using hibernate for example the more you know about these services and the connection providers the data source connections and others it'll be easier for you so it's great learning for you so go ahead and practice here's an important note all services are expected to implement the org hibernate.service.service .service marker interface. Hibernate uses this internally and the only reason is that it uses for some basic type safety. It defines no methods at the moment. So just keep this in mind that all services are expected to implement the actual marker interface. All right, next we get into what is a service registry now. So we talked about the service earlier. Let's take a look at what is the service registry. So the service registry 
simply hosts and manages services okay so think of this as the boss right boss of the service so you work in a department and you have a supervisor you have a boss right so the service registry is essentially managing the service and also hosting it right that's allowing the service to sit in that room and work its contract is defined by the org.hibernate.service.service registry interface so services have a life cycle they have a scope we talked about this briefly services might also depend on other services and they need to be produced for instance choosing one implementation over another the service registry is essentially again manages everything right so it fulfills all the requirements all the needs so in one concise definition the service registry acts as an inversion of control container known as the IOC container so in the object-oriented programming concepts IOC is object coupling you combine objects is bound at one time by an assembler object and is typically not known at compile time using static analysis so just to clarify what the IOC container is within the OOP concepts but the service registry all you need to remember is that it's a manager right that manages the service and hosts the service and also it manages the services lifecycle the scope and so on so what does it do how does it work why do we use it so service is associated with the service registry we talked about that the service registry scopes the service manages the life cycle handles injecting dependencies into the service okay so there's something new so it actually does uh, you can do a both pull and push injection and both approaches are supported service registries are basically hierarchical which means that a service registry can have a parent and child so services in one registry can depend on and utilize services in that same registry as well as many parent registries right so once again the concept of managing the services right whether it's in one directory or the other whether it's a parent or a child here's some visual representation so the service registry builder creates for example if there's a parent called the service registry parent uses the get service and has the service roles the three types of service registries on the bottom here you'll notice it's bootstrap service registry our standard registry implementer and our session factory service registries so all of these link up to the parent and lastly before I end this lesson just the types of service registries so the first one I mentioned was the bootstrap service registry and we'll be using this by the way when we actually get to configuration of our hibernate environment and set everything up we will use service registries because it's much stable and it's much more safe than not using although you can run hibernate environment without these service registries right but it, I think it's a good practice in my experience so you want to use the bootstrap service registry and this registry holds the service that absolutely have to be available for most things to work within the hibernate environment so if you're not using service registries you may get a lot of errors okay so keep that in mind whereas if you use service registries which is simply a, a Java application will create a class and then we'll do some code will create these services so once again the the for hibernate environment to work sometimes you need the bootstrap service registry and this holds typically three services and is normally built by the means of the service registry builder class the second type is the standard service registry so this standard service registry implementer simply defines the main hibernate service registry and it builds on top of the bootstrap service registry which is the parent of the standard service registry 
right? And by default, the standard registry holds most of the services used by Hibernate. The third type is the session factory service registry. So typically, the parent, its parent registry is the session factory services registry, which is designed to hold services which need access to the session factory. And we talked about these concepts earlier, right? About entity session factory. So currently, this has three services. And we're a caution, the integrators, as it stands, the 4.x version of Hibernate operate on the session factory service registry. So just to give you a detailed analysis, the concept, as well as I demonstrated in Eclipse where these things are, so when we actually work with them, it'll be easier for you. So here's your homework. Go through these concepts, understand what a service is, what a registry is, and what service registries are, the types, and what they do. So I hope this helps. Practice, and let's move to the next lesson.